Good evening. My name is Dewan Nelson, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield, Michigan class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis. The president is Dr. Edward Ewell and the vice president, Dr. Ryan Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It, excuse me, sorry about that. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is the title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, 
At this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, excuse me, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah within, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. We will now have our class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Sharon Lewis, followed by scriptures, Acts chapter 10 and 11, read by Dr. Lauren Lewis. Dr. Lewis. I would like to say good evening to the class and let us bow our hearts and our minds in a moment of prayer to our heavenly father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahshua the Messiah. We wanna thank you once again, Yahshua, for allowing us to have the opportunity again to be able to sit and listen and to be here and to be able to hear the precious words that was given to us through by this divine vision and revelation that Dr. H.C. Kinley was given. We thank you for enlightening us and showing us the way to your light and your truth. We thank you for continuing to encourage us to, to maintain and to be diligent, to try everything that we possibly can to be obedient to the spoken word. We just wanna honor you this day, Yashua, and to say again, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, for calling us into the fold and allowing us to be a recipient of this truth. All these and more we ask in your dear son, Yashua's name, let the class say hallelujah. 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 I'd like to say good evening to the class. And I'll be reading out of the King James Version, substituting the true names where appropriate. 
displayed on your screen will be the Holy Name version containing the Holy Name Bible of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late Avery Trainer and Scripture Research Association. That is Acts, the 10th and the 11th chapter. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared Yahweh with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to Yahweh always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of Yahweh coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, master? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before Yahweh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet fastened at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Yahweh, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what Yahweh has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter wondered what this vision which he had seen should mean, Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius the Saturian, a just man, and one that feareth Elohim, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from Elohim by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and he called together his kinsmen and his near friend. And as Peter was coming in, <clears throat> excuse me. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, ye know how it is an unlawful thing for a man who is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of other nations. But Yahweh had shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without hesitation. As soon as I went, was sent for, I asked, therefore, what intent ye have sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting unto this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. And behold, 
a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard and thy alms are, are had in remembrance in the sight of Elohim, excuse me. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before Elohim to hear all things that are commanded thee of Elohim. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which Yahweh sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Yahshua the Messiah, he is the mighty one. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the immersion which John preached. How Yahweh anointed Yahshua of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for Yahweh was with him. And we are witness of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him Yahweh raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen beforehand by Yahweh, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained by Yahweh to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remissions of sin. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because other nationalities also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify Yah excuse me, and magnify Yahweh. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Yahshua. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard the other nation, nationalities had also received the word of Yahweh. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded in by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I had fasted my eyes, I considered, and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay, and eat. But I said, Not so, sire, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What Yahweh hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were three, <clears throat> excuse me, men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And the spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these cis brethren accompanied me and were entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house 
which stood and said unto him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be named. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of Yahweh, how that he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. For as much then as Yahweh gave them like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, what was I that I could withstand Yahweh? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified Yahweh, saying, Then hath Yahweh also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching Yahshua the Messiah. And the hand of Yahweh was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto Yahweh. <clears throat> the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the congregation. <clears throat> which was in Jerusalem, and they sent for the Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of Yahweh, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto Yahweh. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and faith. Many people were added unto Yahweh. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for, seek, for to seek Saul, excuse me. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the assembly and taught much people. <clears throat> and the di disciples were called, excuse me, and the disciples were called themselves the congregation and taught many people. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Excuse me. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dealt, dwelt in Judea which also they did, and sent it to their elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. That is Acts, the 10th and the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Sharon Lewis, for that beautiful prayer, and Dr. Lauren Lewis for the scriptures tonight. Once again, I'd like to say good evening to everyone. Welcome again to another lecture tonight. We're glad to see everyone who was able to come out to attend. As always, first, we'd like to ask to make sure that you keep your cameras off and your mics muted uh, and less called to speak. Tonight is a regular class tonight, and that's with pleasure that for our first speaker, I call we call from our Southfield, Michigan class, Dr. Rhonda Walker. Dr. Walker, are you there? See, she's still on mute. Give her a few more seconds, you can move on to the next one after that. All right. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next speaker for this evening. Uh, it's with pleasure again to call from our Southfield Michigan class. Uh, Dr. Maurice Cahey.
Dr. K. All right. All right. For our next speaker, uh, it's with pleasure to call on the Vice President of the Southfield Michigan class, Dr. Edward Ewell. President. What did I say, please? President. That was my bad. I typed my I'm sorry, the president. I'm sorry. The president. Good evening, class. Good evening. Yes, I'm uh, extremely glad to be here and give a testimony. Um, the Zoom classes that you can watch nowadays are just awesome because you can eat from so many different plates because all the different classes uh, that are on Zoom now um, really enlighten the individuals that take out the time to listen and see the divine vision that was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1931 in the state of Ohio. And since that time, this vision has traveled all over the world in every continent. And people throughout the world are aware of the truth, but there's only a remnant of people left in the earth plane that will accept the truth which has been proven over and over. And um, I'm so glad that I can, for myself and the others that accept the truth that was explained in just simplistic terms, how anyone that has faith and believe that there's a creator, and this creator has a name, his name is Yahweh, he exists as pure spirit, which is symbolized by this uh, cloud, this fiery cloud, this orange and yellow going around the edges of this chart. And Yahweh is spirit. And um, spirit is something that you can't see in the air with your naked eye. But we know spirit exists because it has been manifested in everyone that has breath beginning with Adam. No one existed before Adam, and he was re resurrected from the dust of the earth and became a living soul because Yahweh breathed into him, and he became a living soul. And so it just points to anyone that has breath is a product of Yahweh, Elohim, as he created Adam from the dust of the earth. So we are all offspring, and we're his offspring because he's the mother and father of all things, seen and not seen, Yahweh, Elohim. And so Yahweh in his pure spirit state, he only created one thing, and that was Elohim, which is the archetype, original pattern of the universe. And Archetype means simply there was nothing before him and nothing compared to him. In other words, he was inscrutable, incomprehensible in his pure spirit state. So he had to move from this pure spirit state, taking on nine divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength moving those into this superincorporal embodiment known as Yahweh Elohim, or the Word or Son. And this is what everybody, beginning with Moses, all the way down to John the Revelator, they saw visions and were able to write exactly what Yahweh Elohim had prescribed them. He just got in them and used them to caused the clock to start ticking after he created all of the uh, things in the first six days, rested on the seven days. So mankind was like the 
um, author of the things that existed. So it says over in Genesis that Adam named everything basically that Yahweh has created. And if you look at uh, the genealogies going from Adam down to um, Yahshua Messiah, it just goes back to say, um, he, Luke 3.38, just get that real quick, someone. Get Luke um, 3 and 1 first, and we'll just go right to 3.38. Luke. Luke 3 and 38. Oh, sorry. Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam. Now, what he's describing is like an inverted chronology going all the way back to the first man, Adam. And that's what Luke is. If you read the whole, all of that, who begot who, who begot who. Read. Which was the son of Elohim. Okay, and the King James Version say, which was the son of God. Nice. So we got him there. So we got Yahweh Elohim, the word of son, and then the same, get John 1 and 1, uh, the same word, a son, which, let me back up a little bit. See, Moses was sinned. That's why Moses was able to write those first five books of the Bible. Now, John was looking in reverse over here on the Isle of Patmos. But Dr. Kinley, as you can see this chart, he saw in a stupendous manner, he had a vision of everything that was accomplished in both um, Moses' vision and John's vision. And then he was able to not only write about these things, but draw these out in graphic pictorial form. And he, in other words, Dr. Kinley was the architect that took things from word and to graphic depiction of pictorial form. In other words, taking something, a word, and putting it in shape as a meaning. In other words, like the structure of Yahweh Elohim being threefold, and then taking the tabernacle, seeing how he transformed from himself to this threefold intangible tabernacle back to himself. And then all the creation just came right out of Yahweh Elohim. So he was the archetype or the maker of everything that was made and seen in the vision by Moses, seen by John, but the stupendous manner in which Dr. Kinney saw it, none of them was able to draw a picture. In other words, the novice must remember long, just keep forming pictures zealously. In other words, a word can be formed into a, into a picture and they're associated. And here we got graphic depiction of a vision of everything that was created from the end, even going back into the angelic and then to the physical creation. Now, all of this is saying that you had Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, get uh, John 1 and 1, and uh, we want to talk about, just read that scripture. John, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. Now, many people think, when, and that's, you see that all over the world. They tell me, I'm standing on the word. I'm reading the word. But they don't have a clue that Yahweh Elohim is the word of son. In other words, in the beginning was the word. In other words, that's the beginning that you can see in Moses' vision. John reversed it. And then Dr. Kimmy drew it out to where we can see it. We don't have to read without seeing it come to life. The words that are written in the scriptures. Read. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. Now you hear that? Everything was made by him. Yahweh Elohim, the archetype, original pattern, maker of the universe. Read. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, just hold on a second. When you say, in him was life, and the life was a light. In other words, that's where he put that breath of life into all men. So 
there's a scripture, Psalms 156, say, let everything that have breath praise ye Yahweh. So you wouldn't be able to breathe if you couldn't say, yeah. In other words, everybody is breathing that name, whether they like it or not. They're not breathing Lord, God, or Jesus Christ. They're breathing Yahweh, everything and everybody that has breath. And when you stop breathing that name, you don't exist. A good example of it, now just hold that scripture there. Go to 1 John 5 and 6 real quick, um, and I'll show some witness about uh, how everybody that has breath as a result of the creator setting everything in animation and making everything that exists. First John five and six. Mm -hmm. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahshua the Messiah. Now everybody comes this way. This is a way, keep reading, that you can prove the existence of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. Everybody have breath is breathing, that in invisible spirit. And uh, you have to get Romans 1, 19, 20 after this next couple of scripture, but just continue there while you're reading. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Mm -hmm. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is true. For well, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now, this whole on there, the Father is Yahweh, the Word is Elohim, and the Holy Spirit has a name, Yahshua. These three are one. The Father, the Word, Holy Spirit. These three are one. Read. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. Okay, these... the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Read. And these three agree in one. Mm -hmm. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. If you think anything anybody has said, Reverend Doolittle, popes, bishops, preachers, priests, they're all wrong. Read. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. <clears throat> for this, excuse me, for this is the witness of Yahweh, which he testified of his son. He that believeth on the Son of Yahweh hath the witness in himself. Okay, go over to the um, pattern salvation chart. Okay, so you, and this is up at the top of this plate. Three that bear record in heaven, the Father, Word, Holy Spirit, these three are one. And the witnesses in earth is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree with one. So now... Everybody that has breath and been born on this planet Earth come this way, even Yahshua Messiah. And to prove that, when and before the time of 40 weeks in the mother's womb, nine months, linear months, there's a show of blood before that babe is born. The water bag bursts. And then that babe takes on that first breath of life, his spirit. Yeah, they want to hope that he pronounced the first part of that when he come out the womb. Yeah, and everybody that expire when you leave here, you come out saying yeah, you go out your last breath of life. Boy, boy. I've seen people with that death rattle before they took their last breath. I know that to be true. Hearing a babe, babe born, my youngest five brother was born at the house. I heard them when they spanked them. They were born at home. My youngest, I'm from a family of 11, last five were born at home. And they had the uh, neighbors and uh, nurses help bear the babe, but they were glad to hear that cry. Yeah. And then I've seen with my own eyes and witnessed people die last breath way. So Yahweh from the least to the greatest. And this is the witness. No one can deny it because everybody come by blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, because that points to 
how you are saved or how your salvation was accomplished by this one. Go back to the Moses chart called Yahshua the Messiah. He accomplished everybody's salvation by coming in, dying, buried, and, and resurrecting. Now, I want to go back with the witness in John. I think you were at about one in five, and uh, uh, John one in five. John one and five. Yeah. All right. You can go back to the beginning. Okay. In the, in the beginning in the was be the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And that light and life are synonymous in terms of the breath of life. Everybody that has breath has life or that light that Joshua put in every man's heart. Keep reading. <clears throat> and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Mm -hmm. There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Now he preached and baptized him. That's John the Baptist, who uh, was his cousin. And um, later on in the scripture, and two times he said, behold the lamb. Didn't say, oh, cousin, but oh, behold the lamb, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then he also said, this is the one that's going to, have to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the scripture lesson was, fits perfectly what that promise was. But keep reading. Mm -hmm. That was the true light, which lighteth every man. Let me go back a verse, mm -hmm. eighth verse. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. In other words, he just pointed him out mm -hmm. because when he baptized, when he saw the spirit as a descent as a dove, which had been shown, when you see that, Dove to sin on, that's the one that's the savior. He, although he was his cousin, he said, behold a lamb. And he saw him the next day. And then later on, he had to repeat it. 129 and 136 in this same chapter. You don't have to get it, but anyone want to see it as a witness, just read those times that he was that lamb. But right, read right before you had. I want to go all the way up to that, 14. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was now, made. Now, this is him. so deep. I'm saying this first time I saw this, this has been like 30 years ago, it brought tears to my eyes. Say, he was in the world that they was telling me all my life, Jesus was up in the sky, and we still waiting on him to come back on the cloud, but he was in the world because he made the world, but not in the fleshly form. He made it in the super incorporeal archetype, Elohim, Word of Son form. He gets this in pure spirit, visionary shape and form, a super incorporal, Holy Ghost man form, and in the flesh. But he was in the world, and the world was made by him. Read. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. They didn't he know him. Although he did miracles, raised people from the dead, changed water to wine. I'm talking about people drunk it and, and got spiritually high. But all those witnesses denied him because they had to, I can't help it with the satanic spirit that got in them that caused them to want to crucify him. And they were doing the will of the father because he came in to die, bury, and resurrect because his blood, going back to that death, water, spirit, or death, burial, resurrection, which gave salvation to all mankind. But I just want to get to that, but uh, keep reading where you at. He was in the world, world made by him. He came unto his own and his own received him not. He didn't come to Gentiles, he went to the Jewish nation. And they the ones that crucified him. Now I'm doing when they all gather say, what you want to do with it? Crucify him and let a murderer of the rabbits go free. Read. Mm-hmm. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Yahweh. Now, that's how you receive him. You got to believe on him because he's the only one that's sent to do the job of the father, which was to come in, 
die, bury, resurrect, and pour out his spirit as the scripture lessons both um, have said, and not just, but that was for the Gentiles, us non-Jews. The other promise was he, he's going to bless all men, but I'm jumping ahead of myself, but go way up to 14 and uh, read where it says, even those that believed on his name. Read. Okay. <clears throat> but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of Yahweh even to them that believe on his name. See, you got to believe on that name. Don't let nobody trick you back to saying it don't make no difference what you call them or believe on any other name under heaven. And that includes Dr. Kenley, who confessed he wasn't their savior, but he purposely preached and left books and pamphlets showing that Joshua was the only true Elohim and he was the savior as Joshua Messiah. No one else can wear those shoes. And that's what this teaching is really about because going all the way back to when he made a promise to Abraham, you know, when Abraham was, everybody in the world was Gentiles. In other words, the whole world were, 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 were pagan, not Gentiles, but were really pagan and Gentile because there were no Jews. Abraham was the father of Jew and Gentile through his two sons, uh, Isaac and through Ishmael, but um, did I have another scripture? You, no, uh, we haven't made it to the 14th verse yet. Okay, get to the 14th, okay. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Yahweh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, see, that's another proof, the way that the word was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And when he was in the earth plane, I just want to get this to show some more witnesses that uh, he, uh, get to Exodus 24, well, get 25 and 8. And you see this picture right here. This is what Moses was in the mount having a vision. And before that, Moses, him, Aaron, Nadab, and Bayou, and 70 elders, 74 people, they saw this superincorporal form of Yahweh Elohim. But Moses uh, saw more than what they saw. They saw him. He saw, Moses saw Yahweh transform into this superincorporal form into this tabernacle. Then he told him to construct it. And the reason that he wanted him to construct it and I want to get to that to where it says, certainly I will be with thee. Oh, that's what he told him when he uh, went down uh, in the third chapter of Exodus. But let's get it in Exodus 25 and 8. Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, mm -hmm. according to all that I show thee. Now, see, he's saying, this is Yahweh Elohim telling Moses, say, now make me a sanctuary so I can... Uh, see what y'all doing. No, he says, so he can dwell, in other words, live right among you. And he had a prescribed place in that tabernacle that he resided as Yahweh Elohim mm -hmm. above the two cherubim above the mercy seat. In other words, that's why you say he dwelled in the most holy place. But here he said, make me a sanctuary that I can dwell among you. And then when he was at with Moses at that burning bush, he told him, say, now, certainly I'm going to be with you, Moses. I think that's three and seven. He said, when I'm going, Moses was, was crying and saying, I can't speak good. What, how am I going to get back down here and deliver these people? But just get that in Exodus 3 to just show us in the book where he told him, certainly I'm going to be with you. And that's a great, great mystery there that people... Um, Particularly if you're not in this class, you can't see that burning bush. In that bush, it said it was an angel, say it was Yahweh, say it was Elohim, but the angel of Yahweh was Yahshua, the son of Nun, or Yahshua back there. But that's who was with them all the way up. And then in, Exodus, in Joshua, the 24th chapter, he confessed that he was always with them, all the way back, bringing them from paganism, where Abraham was and taking them up. 
and going back down and forth, it was Yahshua the son and Anna, Yahshua with them. But just get that in the scripture where it say, certainly I'm going to be with you. You got that, Laura. It's, you said Exodus 3? Yeah, I don't know. 3 and 7. Exodus 3, Exodus 3 and 12. Okay. Mm. Exodus 3 and 12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. Okay, just back up to 7. So just get that okay. part of the conversation. Okay. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which now, are... And he's telling them this because how can you see some unless you have eyes to see it? Mm. Where would you see it from if you've certainly seen the affliction? Because they're down here in, 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 in Egypt. He's out here in Midian. You know, that's where Moses was, you know, some miles away from where he said, talking about. Mm. Read. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver. And he has come down. He has come down. Not invisible, but he was down there as an angel. And uh, that angel was Yahshua the son of Nun or Yahshua himself, which he had the power to lay down his life, pick it up again. And uh, we got that even in the textbook and uh, show some, a lot of witnesses on that. But anyway, I didn't want to jump to that just to show that he said, certainly, get get up to read up to, certainly I'll be with the read. All right. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the land of, hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land. Now he said, I'm going to come down and I'm going to bring them up. Mm-hmm. What a great mystery. Moses wasn't, was just a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. He was a go-between. He was an intercessor. Mm -hmm. But that Yahshua, the son of Nun, when he confessed it, 24th chapter of Joshua, that he did, did it all. Mm -hmm. But here, suddenly I'm going to go, I'm come down and going to do what? And to bring them up out of that and land. And I'm going to bring them up out of that land, read. Unto a good land. Unto a good land, not the wilderness of Sinai. They were out here for 40 years because they were disobedient when Yahweh sent 12 spies over the spider land. And they say, oh, they're too big. We can't take them. Only Caleb and Joshua, the son of Nun, say we can take them. They wanted to stone them for going over because they took the bad report. Said, no, we're too scared. So Yahweh punished them, had them 40 years out here in the wilderness. But one thing, when they got to this Red Sea, when after they were leaving, that one to say, certainly I'm going to be with you and, and lead you and guide you. It was a pillar cloud at night. And to prove that, get First Corinthians 10 and 1 real quick. And then um, get someone, get uh, Exodus 14, 13. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, Paul is reaching all the way back here. Some happened thousands of years before him talking about what Moses and them came through this divided waters of the Red Sea. And so he's able to write about it. Read. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, that and that rock, rock that, was the Messiah. That rock that followed and led them was the Messiah. It was a pillar of fire by day, and I mean, pillar of fire by night and cloud by day. Now get over there and. Uh, Exodus 14, where Yahshua, I just show you where he transformed into that cloud. He, but Exodus 14. I got, uh, what's, what's the verse? I'm sorry. I think around 19. Oh. I'm not positive on that, but it, I just want you to read the show where he was a cloud. It didn't go all the way up to 39. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exodus 14 and 19. And the angel of Elohim, which went before the camp of Israel. Now, hold on right there. Um, get Exodus uh, 
17 and 9. Yeah, 17, 9. Exodus 17 and 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hand. Okay, so here what is happening is that they are fighting. They weren't crossing the River Jordan yet, but they were on this side of River Jordan. And so it just shows you where Moses... And the point I want to make here is, was uh, had Joshua or Joshua going out fighting for them. And so just go on and say that when Moses held up his hand, they prevailed. In other words, they won. And so I just want you to read up to where Joshua was the one that com just comforted those people. Just keep right. reading. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Mm -hmm. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his okay. people. Okay, so this is where uh, Moses wrote about him. And that's a scripture. I don't want to get that now where Moses actually wrote about him. Then get Exodus 23, 20 to show you who this was who fought the battles in, in Joshua 12th chapter. He killed 33 kings, two on this side of Jordan, 31 on the west bank part of Jordan River. On the other side, starting with Jericho, 31 kings he killed over there. And he kept their crowns. And over Revelation 19 chapter, so he put those 33 crowns on at the age of 33. That's another story. But just read what I just asked for. Exodus 23 and 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Now, angel, he's going to send an angel before. He's talking, this angel is Joshua, Joshua, the son of Nun. That's who he's sending before him. He's the same one Say, sir, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to lead you all the way up to the promised land. Now he's fighting their battles for them, Read. Behold, I send the angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Keep going. Keep going. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. My name is in him. See that? We got it here, but in the book, it's called Joshua. Wasn't no J. Joshua. Mm -hmm. That's who his name was in it. And I just want to get that now. Get um, just a couple more scriptures, and I'll be down. But Joshua 1 and 3. That is Joshua 1 and 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon... <laughs> That have I given unto you, as now I you said. see this. This is when they done crossed the River Jordan, and and when they ready to cross the River Jordan, he's talking about this promise. Now this is the same promise that was made to Abraham, made to Isaac, and made to Jacob. So in all the history of time, this is an example that we need to look at to see what they went through to get to heaven or get to the promise of the, and that's what we're looking for, that Holy Spirit to be in us. And we want to be in the promised land, not a physical land, but in um, eternal glorification in Yahshua the Messiah. That's what body we want to be in, not a physical body. And the ages and dispensation shows that, but uh, how far are you now in uh, Joshua? Third verse, one and yes. three. Okay, keep reading. All right, every place that the sole of 
of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now, you see, that's the promise. And see, the big thing about it, just Exodus, I mean, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, is the Abrahamic promise. And Yahweh made that promise to Abraham that everybody would be blessed through him for eternal glorification or eternal damnation through him. And uh, just one, let's see. Uh, mm, I'll uh, end right here at. Uh, Let's see. <clears throat> Take uh, the 24th chapter of Joshua and uh, I'll end there. Joshua 24 and 1. And see, these are all examples. In other words, the law and the prophet. Those are witnesses. In other words, that's where we want to go to find out the truth of what Yahshua has done because he fulfilled everything in the law and the prophets to a jot and a till. So if he took them to heaven back here, what do you think he's going to do today? Take, who's going to take you to heaven other than him? Okay. That's a physical type of heaven, but the glorified type of heaven in the next age, which is spiritual, you want that Holy Spirit to take you across there. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, just a witness. So here's what he said, and I don't want to read it all, just uh, read fast, Joshua 24, where he say, I, personal pronoun, was the one that deliver, really delivered you. Keep Read that real quick. All right, Joshua 24 and 1. Yeah. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elder, elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before Elohim. See when they, you see that? They all came there and they sat and they presented themselves before Elohim. In other words, he was Elohim. Mm -hmm. You see that? He was Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. And they presented themselves before him. Read. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, <clears throat> excuse me, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, and they served idols. See, everybody was pagans. Mm. The whole world. Nobody was, was, was righteous. Mm. Not a single one. No, not one. The only one ever been righteous was Joshua Messiah. And that's who we want to be in that number. Read. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed. And, and you see that he made the promise to him. Say, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. 12th chapter, 17th chapter, 22nd chapter, Genesis, all testing him, giving him a covenant. Certainly I'm going to be with you, Abe. Read. Mm -hmm. And gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave unto Esau a Mount Seir to, pos to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also and Aaron. He sent Moses. Yahshua did that. Mm -hmm. He was his minister. He was his angel. He was everything. Read. And I sent Moses also and Aaron. And I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them. He put them ten plagues on them. He divided those waters. He delivered them up to heaven. And he's the same yesterday, same today, and forever. That's all you have to read there. Thank you for the time. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gill, for that powerful testimony. And for our next speaker tonight, we'll also be calling from our Southfield class. I'm going to try it again. Dr. Maurice Cahey, are you out there? Dr. Kehi, if you're available. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, how y'all doing? How y'all doing today? 
Yeah. That's good. I'm, well, I'm glad to uh, actually be here listening today because I've been missing class so much. I've been really needing to hear what's going on just to edify my spirit. So, with that just been said, I would like to listen to uh, the next speaker and see so I could just feel better. With that, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Cahill. And uh, for our next speaker from our Southern Michigan class, we will also have uh, Dr. Marcus Brazil. Dr. Brazil. I'd like to take it even to class. Uh, everybody hear me? Gary. Yep, Gary. Um, I'm thankful just for having anything to say and to have a testimony to our Savior, Yashua Messiah. Just like the previous speaker was saying, it is a, a good thing just to hear the gospel and to you find out sometimes that the, just the listening to the gospel um, kind of relaxes you and calms you and you know brings you down from your whatever you you're in mood you're in a mode you're in and it is soothing which they call it this word is soothing to the spirit it's not uh it's actually physical too it's physical and and, and spiritual it kind of calms you down and that was on my mind that the last couple of days is how well, you, it's all so you find out that this gospel is also also not just the truth of the world, but it's personal, just becomes very personal to you. And versus me, me personal, meaning that Yahweh is working with you individually and specifically and, and purpose, you know, specifically with things you're going through, things that you're that happen to you, or whatever's going you're going through through the day or through the week or the month of the year. Yahweh, you know, is working with you all the time. And so, right. with me. Uh, he has on my heart why why do you become so complacent sometimes and I and that's just personal personal thing because you kind of it's not like you the things we hear is that Yahweh is giving you understanding to hear what you hear but you have to understand is is some people that just don't hear what you hear and don't understand that what you understand even with the with the talking about the name or the book or the, any scripture you're talking about and and hear it all the time oh i'm so blessed and i'm doing great and everything like that and then we hear the gospel and we and we just like it's just the normal thing <laughs> and now we have to remind you this is it is a gift it is a, <laughs> that you understand what you understand it is not by your own volition or your own doing right by the day or whatever he's giving you a gift of understanding and I'm asking Yahweh to, to not let me forget that. Because sometimes you get some discomplacent. You, you know, like, oh, I heard that. I heard that before. You know, and, but you don't understand what you're listening to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all have to make me understand, remember what I'm listening to. You know, listening to the true gospel of the world. So, and then you kind of forget how blessed you are. You know, you know, you hear it all the time for people in the world, but really how truly blessed you are. And the scripture that came to mind was, um, Ephesians 2. What is Ephesians 1 in one sec? Get that, please. <laughs> Ephesians 1. I'm sorry. I got it, Dorian, if you. I got it. Ephesians 1 1 says, Saul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by mm -hmm. the will of Yahweh. To the sons which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Grace be to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and from mm -hmm. the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Blessed be Yahweh, the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the mm -hmm. Messiah, according mm -hmm. as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of, of sons by Yahshua the Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, mm -hmm. 
to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, for, excuse me, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even mm -hmm. in him, mm -hmm. in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated. Stop, stop, stop. No. Now, you know, you, you know how many times you've heard that? Huh? Mm -hmm. Now listen, now listen how blessed you are. If you read from the top, from the top, if you read from the top again, it says he chosen you, he blessed you first, and he chose you, and predestinated you. Then you <laughs> it's, it's so, I mean right. to the point you actually have to start it over and start it over and listen to what, what it's actually saying. Now listen now, you understand what Paul is. Paul is the one that was uh, knocked down and and, and changed and y'all always using him, and these are letters written to certain ones like Ephesus and there's Corinth and right there's certain letters that he went to and reading like like say reading some else's nail but it's it's unto Yahweh it, it, it's the ones that are beloved in Yahweh so oh, Yahweh has chosen and so <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna interject a little bit by a little bit but you have to read you have to restart that about it from me again when he when he well understand what who Paul is and what Paul you know how Yahweh has used Paul for this and that and everything and Yeah, you have to start from the top. And I'm going to interject little by little as it goes. And I'll be talking about just the premise I'm talking about, how you know, we really don't know how blessed we are, how we understand what we understand, what we know what we know. And I'm thankful just to know what I know. You know, sometimes you just incomplete sometimes, but yeah, we just <laughs> put you in a certain place that you don't even know where you're at. Sometimes you yeah, we remind you where you're at. Right. So, all right. So just start from the top, but I'll interject as, as a couple of All right. Ephesians chapter one. Mm hmm Saul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, by the will of Yahweh, to the sons which are at Ephesus, and to the mm -hmm. faithful in Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Grace be to you, and peace from our from Yahweh our Father, and from the right. Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Peace. Go ahead. Blessed be Yahweh, the Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the right, Messiah. Blessed us. Go ahead. <laughs> According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That we, go ahead. That we, should, world. Go ahead. <laughs> that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Yahshua the Messiah to himself. Mm -hmm. According to the good pleasure of his will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Accepted, go ahead. <laughs> in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Right. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having yeah. made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he may he, know you, the mystery will. Go ahead, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> which he hath purposed in himself. Uh -huh. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, mm -hmm. both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even right. in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. An inheritance. <laughs> all things we are blessed by. <laughs> go ahead, keep going. <laughs> Being predestinated according to the purpose of him, who worketh mm -hmm. all things after the counsel of his own will. Right. Go that, we should, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in the Messiah. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. You heard the gospel it? of your salvation. Mm -hmm. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Mm-hmm which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. 
unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Savior, Yahshua, and love unto all the sons, cease not to give, excuse me, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the Elohim of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your under... That's good. I'm just, I didn't see it on point, but I'm saying... Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that came to mind and you, you just read it or you, or you put it on audio and you just read it and you, you know, you listen to it, what it's saying, right? <laughs> and it's, and it's you know, who's the us to, I mean, you know, saying, it's talking about you, you, you want to be chosen, you're the beloved, you always chose you to, to hear it, you know, out of grace that you're saved, that you, you know, you ain't did nothing to, to understand that you, you're given his, the true name and then not just the true name, but the importance of it. Now, some people hear it. I've heard the name Yahweh before, but don't really know the importance of it. He's giving you the importance of it and not, not to forsake it, not to put it in vain, not to, you know, misuse it, you know, all that. <laughs> and I'll see that. I'll be sitting at work. I swear. I'll be sitting at work. And I'll just be marveling and listening to the news and things that's going on and how Yahweh just, what the knowledge he's giving you, the little that he's giving you, gives you peace over what you hear throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? I listen to news daily and I, and I do it all, all the time just to hear what's going on in the other side of the world and all that. But things are going on for a certain reason. You understand? But Yahweh has a purpose for everything, even for you, for you, for you know how things are going and how the world's going. But in that, in the knowledge of Him, that's what this is, school is all about and having knowledge of the Messiah in you, you know, having that understanding gives you that peace, gives you that that you're not riled up when you hear it. You're not, you're not, oh my gosh, you know, you're not down, you know, you know what I'm saying? Even when you do, you know, he always has a purpose in mind. So he reminds you that I got this, you know what I'm saying? That is my, that is my forever trust, put it that way. That's my forever, you know, confidence is that Yahweh is controlling over everything. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's all you you have really, you know. Right. Right. Peace that you have to give you, not the world. He says it right there in the book. Not that the world gives you the peace, I give you. <laughs> and it starts off by saying, Peace I leave with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you, that's, that's what I'm thankful for because you don't, you, you, you can't take it, you take it for granted, and you, you know, we have to slap you in the head and say, You can't take this. You can't put it in the back strip. You can't put it, you know what I'm saying? You can't put it on the back burner. You know what I'm saying? It is what going to sustain you for things to come, <laughs> and what you call it, and, and into the and carry you to the next age. The knowledge of Yahshua Messiah, not not your worldly possessions, <laughs> not the things you strive for in the world. And I say, and Yahweh always remind me, like if you can't take it with you, you I would put a worth on it. <laughs> if you can't, if you can't, can you take it with you? All the stuff, stuff we we uh, accumulate in the world, things. If, can you take it with you? <laughs> you going to, you know what I'm saying, what's going with you when you, when you leave her? You know what I'm saying, when y'all, you know what I'm saying, can you take it in that age? I mean, there's stupid questions, but y'all be working individually for stuff like that. And I'm thankful for that little bit that he gives me. And that gives me my, my peace daily. And that's really, that's what I have to say, because anybody else, if I know what, what I'm coming from, now you can expound upon that for the next speaker, but that's what I have, y'all has been dealing with me with, because I'm trying to, you know, and my prayer is not to have me take it for granted. Not to, he's blessed me and given me a voice to say, and he could, I couldn't speak, I couldn't do things. Now he's given me that, but use it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all always say, listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? That's y'all we talking to individually. Talk to you, listen to me. You know, don't worry about the world doing. Listen, listen to what I got to say. And then I'll give you peace. That's what that means. I'll give you peace. You got to listen. You got to trust Yashua, though. You got to, Hear what Yah what Yahweh said. You know, that's the beast we're talking about. That's Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah, because Yahweh, uh, Yahshua Messiah means Yahweh is salvation. You know, that's what Yahshua is. Salvation to you, which is the Father, you know. So anybody that got anything out of that, I'm just praised and glad to be here just to have and here to hear, you know, eyes to see. You know what I'm saying? So that is my my prayer for myself and everyone who comes across this gospel. Mm -hmm. Give it ear to hear, you know, because most people can listen but don't hear. You know what I'm saying? You know, 
you know, I don't think I said that wrong, but you know, yeah, uh-huh. they hear it, not just to, just listening, but you know, you know, you're not just hearing it, but you're listening to what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You're paying attention to the, the spiritual points that's going on, not just going on about things, but there's a spiritual point to everything. Right. When you point to the spiritual point out, you really get powerful. When you see the point in all the spiritual points, you know, it gives you, you know, shows you things and shows you the spiritual point of it oh, that overshadows anything physical. You know, it happens all the time. So that's my prayer. He always just continue that with me. And um, for those people, as I say, hallelujah, praise to Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Brazil, uh, for your testimony this evening. I truly enjoyed that. Uh, and it's with pleasure that we call on, I think, from Georgia, uh, Dr. Rochelle Morgan. I only came on to listen. Hi, Rosa. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can well, hear you. Hello. <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> You're hearing. Good. I'm sorry. We can hear can you. Can you hear me okay? Uh-huh. Okay, excellent. Hi. Hello, Southfield. Oh, my God. How are you guys doing? I hope everybody's fine. I, I love to hear your speakers. They give such great witnesses to the reality of what we come down here for. Um, you know, it's just amazing that, um, and I love the fact you hear all these wonderful gentlemen speaking so worldly of Yahweh. And, and it's a blessing because there's so many men out here uh, that are just lost and they have no idea what the creator is or what the creation is going through nor why. And they, they run to um, Christianity and they run to the Muslims and they, they're looking for release, black relief black and white, they're looking for an understanding. So when you see men in class, I'm always so taken that Yahshua's calling in all these wonderful men to listen to this gospel. And uh, again, this is a school and Mr. Ewell talked about that. This is a school, this is, this is not a church concept. And we all come down to the school to learn something that we didn't know. And that's what it was like in regular school. This is a great Romans 1, 19 and 20. You come down here to hear to this school to learn something that you didn't know. And in our case, this is a metaphysical school. So we're a school teaching you beyond the physical body. So when we come to these schools, that's why in some of the classes, when they do their prayer, they're saying, give your attention, stop what you're doing and devote two hours to listen to what thus said Yahweh, because he's going to teach us something that we didn't know, or he will give us a better understanding of something that we thought we understood. Because in regular school, you know, you have to really, uh, that's why you go to school for eight years of your life to try and just deal with the ABCs and see how they get worked into words, paragraphs, thoughts, and all of that stuff. That's a process uh, of how it happens from a natural standpoint. Well, the same thing has to happen to you from a spiritual standpoint. This school was established by um, Dr. Kinley in the year 1931. He told uh, the world he had a divine vision and a divine revelation straight from the creator of heaven and earth. And when he preached the gospel during those years, I'm so amazed that there are so many members that were there back then because you had Hitler going on back then, you had um, wars, you had hatred of black and white, you had so many things happening during that time. And so we are all born at an appointed time. And um, that's just amazing when you read about people like Dr. Gill and, and his wife and um, Dr. Carr and his family. You know, Dr., I love how um, one of the uh, guys, I can't think of his name now, from Springfield and how he would say, well, before I came to class, I was quite prejudiced. So see, we all come to class with something that Yahweh has got to get and change in us, you know, because of the, we are born in a world that happens to be the satanic kingdom. And the world doesn't teach us that because I came from a Catholic church and 
They didn't say anything about the devil except he was in the heart of the earth and he was really, really bad. And you didn't want to have to die and go to hell and have to deal with him. And that's what we were taught, things of that nature. When we come down to the school, can I get um, um, where he says, without the prophetic vision, the people perish. That's over under the uh, in the prophets, the law and the prophets. Um, it's Proverbs. Does 29. anyone know where that's? Thank you, ma'am. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no prophetic mm -hmm. vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law. Where there is no what? Where there is no. Can you read that again, please? Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. Hello? And that's what Dr. Kinley, he had a prophetic vision. He said, where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. So you come down to the school and realize that, and it's such a hard thing to believe that the creator, because when, I, when we say this, we're talking to a cardinal mind, because we are taught that God is so far, sun, moon, and stars, you just can't. You can't talk to him face to face. You can't reach up there and grab him and talk to him. And that's why the Roman Catholic Church would have you think that the Pope was a mediator and you can go to your Pope or to your a priest and confess your sins and he'll give you 10 Hail Marys and you're good to go. And these are the things we were taught in school. We were taught to use the rosary and pray out to Mary and, and she's going to help. And that's why I have all these little trinkets if you go to... Um, some of these places, they got the stars and they got the Holy Mary statue and they got statues of Peter and all of these other things. And they think that um, having those idols is going to help you. But mm. when we come down to the school, Dr. Kenny said he had a divine vision. Then he got a divine revelation. And he was also told what to do with that information. He was told uh, to teach thy people. And this book, uh, known as the Bible was given to the human race, I mean, to the world. And when we got our textbooks, they were given to the human race, to the world. So then we come here and Dr. Kinley said that the creator had a name. I didn't know he had a name. I thought the name, I thought when I was growing up, Lord and God were names. And I had to come down to this school and be taught that Lord and God are titles and they're not names. So then when he has this divine vision, he's, as I said, he preached under the Lord God and Jesus Christ. Then uh, as time went on, it was revealed to him to start using the true names. And so he started using the name of Yahweh, the title Yahweh Elohim, and the true name Yahshua, the Messiah. And so when I got that information and I took that little pamphlet, we have several pamphlets in the textbook, and I took that back to my priest. And my priest said, I was taught this. And um, my priest said he was taught this in uh, seminary school. And he said, now that you know this, come on back down to school and be a good little Catholic girl. Well, that the statement of dog returning to his vomit, that's what came in my mind. And yeah. I couldn't do it. And I'm so fortunate Yashua never let me return back to the Catholic church because that was done. It was once you've been lied to, your entire life, and then they try and tell you, and these are the words my priest used. He said, it is more profitable for us to use the name, the, the name. They didn't call, he called them names, Lord God, Jesus Christ. So it's more profitable. They didn't care about the soul because when I came down here, I had to learn that um, man is made up body, soul, and spirit. So when he gave the name of Yahweh, you have to understand Yahweh is spirit. Can we get John? 424 because the world teaches that uh it doesn't matter what you call them but that's not what he said and then we need to learn that Yahweh is spirit and I just want someone to read that because I didn't know that I didn't even know that was I didn't read the Bible so I didn't know that was in there John 4 24 that's John 4 and 24 I'm sorry for Yahweh is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth now, that's a uh, commandment. When you see the word must, these are the little things you learn. But in some Bibles, it will read Yahweh is a spirit. But since coming down to this school, we understand he is the only spirit. So it's not like there's a rebuttal. You know, there's not, there's only one spirit. And that one spirit is Yahweh. Yahweh is spirit. And spirit is made up of attributes. That's what makes him up. 
and his attributes happen to be nine divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. Now, that's not all of what he's made up. These are just some that he's bringing out to us, the divine, nine divine attributes, okay? And those nine divine attributes in that pure spirit state, so says the moderation, are inscrutable and incomprehensible. Right. Meaning that we don't have the tools, because the only tools we have are our five senses. So we don't have the tools to scrutinize and tell you much about Yahweh in that pure spirit state. But what I've learned is that this is a love story. And being a love story, Yahweh wanted the creatures that he created to know about him and to love him. And in order for that to happen, things had to happen. So that holy, that one spirit, Yahweh, had to step into shape and form, taking on shape and form. And he gave himself the title Elohim, the word or a son. So Elohim, and it says it right on the top of the chart, Elohim, the archetype, and that means original pattern of the universe. I did not know my creator was a pattern of the universe. And I love on this chart, it says Yahweh is spirit, okay? And if you look at the chart, you'll see that fiery colored chart all around. Everything's inside of that chart. Nothing's outside of that fiery colored chart. And that's why, they, that's why Paul writes in uh, Acts, he says, we live. We move and have our being within him. So every you will never be able to, the world teaches you when well, you're gonna die and you'll see God and you'll see your mom and your daddy. That's not true. You are never gonna see Yahweh in that pure spirit state. So we can stop looking for something that's never gonna happen because you don't have the tools. He's so Yahweh is so vast, you don't you couldn't if you just can't understand him. And he will not let you go outside and look at him, just like you've never seen your own self. All you've ever seen is a reflection of what you look like because mm. you can't step outside your body and look at your body and say, wow, I should wear am ugly. You just can't make those statements because you, you be dead, you know? So nothing lives outside of Yahweh, okay? So Yahweh in that pure spirit state steps into shape and form, meaning those nine divine attributes did not lose any power. That's when they take on a set shape and form. And when he's in that shape and form, he even put this on the chart. He's Yahweh, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua, all encompassing one. But you have to understand he has a purpose, he has a pattern and he has a plan. And you have to understand he has structure and he has function. None of this is taught in a church. They are not going through this. They're just, when you go to church, they're just telling you about your habits and things you shouldn't do. And they're going to tell you that we're going through a recession or they're not. They're going to give you illusion. Everything is fine when it's not. So anyway, when Yahweh takes on that set shape and form, this is what Moses saw in his vision. And then he turned, then he also takes off that shape and form and steps into letting you know what was inside of that shape and form, which was a pattern. That's what he's made up of. That's what he is. He's a pattern. Then we have to learn the pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. Three different compartments, but one tabernacle pattern. Then he steps back into himself, and that's being done right here. Thank you for this help with that. That's like having your corner in your hand. So he steps back into himself. Then he goes about the show. Well, where did everything come from? I mean, I've been to Africa, I've traveled, and people always want to know, where did it all come from? He's showing you right here. He goes into the days of creation. Now, it does not take Yahweh, Elohim, that long to do anything. It said he spoke it, and it came to pass. But because this is a love story, and because we have to come to this, this doctrine as a child, and when you come as a child, you've got to understand you're going to have all these questions of why, why, why. Because that's what children do. But at the same time, they're so, I love how Rhonda always brings out her um, nephew and how he's always learning things. And he's so amazed by the things he's learning. Don't you know, you and I, I was like that when I came in class. I came in as a child because I came in dead on arrival. My soul was dead. So when Yahweh calls you in, he has to introduce himself to you. He tells you his name. He tells you what he's made of. Eya, Asha, Eya. Then he also tells you, I am a pattern. And the world doesn't believe that the creator is a pattern. And if you use the correct terminology, 
this will make so much more sense to you. So you got Yahweh Elohim creating day one, day two, the sun comes in on that fourth day. You'll see all the things that are happening and the world can't get over the fact that the green came in the world before the sun was in the world. But Yahshua does it. He's the almighty provider. He can do things like that, okay? Not realizing that the son had to come in on fourth day because it's a part of his purpose. If that number four means a lot, you will learn things like that. Then he goes in to show, well, when did man come in? Because everything was created before man. Well, Adam wasn't created until the sixth day of creation. And why is that? Because man cannot sit around and say, look what Yahweh and I did. Because man is vain. They think they do everything. And that's the problem with so many of the Americans, if I could say it that way. Until you learn to travel abroad, you'll think that you're better than anything in the world. But some of these people in this third world country have more common sense than you will ever have. You know, they're not, they don't care about the gold and the silver. They're just content being able to eat, have some water and go to sleep. We want it all. We want everything. But that comes with the lack of knowledge too, because when you travel, you get to humble yourself and say, wow, I take for granted that I have running water. I take for granted that I can flush a toilet and turn a light on. I mean, even in our dear state of Texas, I think when they had all that flooding and what have you, these people are still without light right now. There's so many, uh, Kentucky's like that. Kentucky, which is right I crossed the bridge over the Mississippi River and I'm in Kentucky. And Kentucky has got such damage due to the flood that happened in that area to this, these people are still, thousands of people are still without light, without electricity. So these are the things that we take for granted. So then Yahweh Elohim created everything. Then he steps back into himself and we're, we're watching. See this, you just can't talk about everything in one or two lectures. That's why some of us will say, oh, we've been in class 20 years, 30 years, because it takes some time you're not going to learn everything very fast. Just like from a natural standpoint, you went to school eight years just to get out of grammar school. Then you had to go four more years just to get out of high school. And some of us didn't do that. Some of us, like Dr. Kinley, didn't even make it out of grammar school. Then for those that decide they want to be a doctor, whatever the profession is, they went on to college and did some of them do four, eight, 12 more years just to get other types of degrees. But that has nothing to do with what... Um, understanding spiritual things. And that's a big stumbling block for some people. I brought professors to my class and tried to show them this wonderful vision. And they're like, so you believe this stuff? And, they, and they're, so, they're so book knowledge, they just can't believe that the creator could be this simple. And most professors will tell you, yes, we know the creator's name is Yahweh, but they're not knowing it the way that we have to come to know it. The word know, you have to have that intimate contact uh, what is relationship with the creator just like Adam said he knew Eve and they conceived well when you know Yahweh you're going to conceive you you don't it, nothing is the same for you so then what we have to realize that self-same spirit Yahweh Elohim at an appointed time got in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah which is our salvation I didn't know my salvation had a name which is Yahshua Messiah, I means Yahweh is salvation. So the world wants to teach that Jesus was God's little boy and he came in to do something, not realizing we learn and are taught that Yahweh himself came into that physical body in the likeness of sinful flesh to redeem our souls. And, that, and it's a round trip. It's a descending, he came down, and it's a, yeah, then it's an ascending, he goes up. up. It's a round trip. And he's not empty when he comes up. So once you understand the name of Yahweh, the title Yahweh Elohim, then you know there was a son that does everything, which is Yahshua the Messiah. So then we've introduced you to the names. And that's why it's so important that we go to the name. So people think a name isn't important, but a name is important. I mean, look at all these people with, uh, down here in this, uh, I'm in Southern Illinois. And the name that they rely on is Sweet Jesus. I'll be there and I'll go so many places and I'm talking to people and I can say, hey, the Holy Spirit is really taking care of me. And they're like, yes, he does. Hallelujah. But see, they're talking about Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about Yahshua the Messiah. And I know that I'm, we're talking about two different doctrines right there. But I have, and you have to be careful too, people, because you all in Michigan. I mean, that Satan's and mystery is there running rapid too. And, mm -hmm. um, 
you just can't. You have to ask Joshua when to talk to someone and what to say, because you got these people that would kill you over there, sweet Jesus. And the apostles went through the same thing. So we go through the same thing, that process of learning that name. And once you get that, then, then Joshua, he loves us so much in case you don't have a subject matter or you, you're like, well, what else do I talk about? He teaches you where to go. He said, well, go over to Luke 27 and tell them where all this starts so they'll know where to begin. Luke 27, I think 24, 25, where it says, and beginning at Moses. Now, what else do you think is weird? The founder said, we are in the law of prophets fulfillment. And we understand the law is the first five books of the Bible. The prophets are the remaining 34 books, which the people call the Old Testament. And then the fulfillment, which is the New Testament of the uh, books, the other books. But when the apostles were walking around, all they had were the law and the prophets. You know, and he says, well, tell them where to start. Go to Luke, please. 24, 25 or something. Beginning at Moses. Yes, Luke 24 and 25. Uh, yes. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Now um, that's us. That's us this day. Old fools. Because I was an old fool. As I said, we came into this into the, one of these schools and most, most of us were over 21. So when we came in these schools, we walked in with a physical body. So we thought we were alive. And it took this doctrine, this gospel that we got directly from the creator himself to tell us that you are made up body, soul, and spirit. And your physical body, you're walking around, you think you're alive, but guess what inside, what makes you up? What are the attributes that make you up? It's called your soul. Your soul is dead because it inherited a dead like state of existence from the fall of Adam. I didn't know that. I didn't know I was walking around dead as a doorknob. I'm like, oh my God. So these are things that you learn down at the school. So body, soul, and it says spirit. As I said, there's only one spirit. He has two mysteries in operation. Mm -hmm. He's got the mystery of righteousness and he has the mystery of unrighteousness. And they both have attributes. You know, uh, the attributes are there. Uh, there it is. There is that chart right there. And it tells you the myth, Aya, Asha, Aya, which Yahweh gave to Moses. He said, I will be what I will to be. The world can accept that. They want to have a good God concept. And when you're talking to these good Christians, all they want to hear is prosperity. All they want to hear is, girl, how much money are you making this year? What kind of car are you driving? They're so stuck on the physical. You, it takes Yahweh to just blow them away and realize this too shall go. And they don't want to believe that. They act like it's going to, like those are Joe. Are they Jehovah Witness? They think that uh, Yahweh is going to take and kill all the people on the earth, but he's going to keep the earth so that they'll stay here and dwell on the earth for the period of time before that ends. But that's not true. That's a man-made concept. See, we're out, down at this school, we teach you doctrines of like, I didn't know the doctrine of Christianity, especially Catholic Church, until I got pulled out of the Catholic Church. While I was up in it, I, as a, not to be honest, um, I worked at the Catholic Church uh, all through high school. I couldn't wait to, till that day would come. I would get married and walk down that aisle and be in that big, beautiful church that I grew up in. But Yahweh snatches all that delusional stuff out of you. And he don't leave you void. When he takes away a lie, he replaces it with the truth. So those, those two mysteries in operation, and what is it in Colossians says, great is a mystery of holiness, grab that too. So the mystery of attribute has got those, I mean, the mystery of righteousness has got those attributes that are all righteous, but Satan got mystery, got attributes too. He's a hateful, he's a, they called him a liar from the very beginning, because he did, he lied from the beginning, he's continuing to lie. What do I mean by a lie? Uh, call him whatever you like. You don't, he doesn't care what you call him. That's a lot. He does care what you call him. You know, so there's so many examples of how he is just, uh, he told Eve, no death will you die. That's a lie because Adam and Eve died in their heart and mind the day they disobeyed the law. So see, he can't help but lie because he was created to be that, that Yahweh made him to be. Now he may intimidate us because we are no match for that satanic mystery. But Joshua, and I love the statement in the scripture where it says, greater is he 
that is in you, that's if you got Yahshua in you, then he, Satan, who is in the world. See, you are no match for Satan. I'm not trying to go toe to toe with the devil. And, and the, why? Because the devil knows the scriptures. What proof do I have of that? When the, uh, Yahshua came out after being baptized by his cousin, he went up into the mountain. Who was there with him? Satan, tempting him, telling him things like, if you be, knowing darn well who he was, if you be, uh, turn these rocks into bread and saying all kind of crazy stuff to him. And Yahshua, had to just go back into the scripture. That's why Dr. Kinley, now I understand, I understand now why Dr. Kinley was constantly telling us, you have to know what's in the book. Why? Because Satan knows what's in the book and that's the tool he is going to use to deceive you. He ain't gonna pick something out in the book because that's all he knows. He don't know the whole story, but what he knows, that's what he's gonna try and use. Those are his tools to deceive you, to believe that Yahshua is a lie and have you come and worship him. Yahshua did not lie. So if Yahshua was accused of being a liar, why do you think to this day, those people that don't believe the doctrine Dr. Kennedy gave us, they're calling it a lie. They're like, that ain't true. He didn't mean that, but he did. He meant what he said and he said what he meant. So I already brought it up to tell you about those two mysteries and people. The world ain't teaching you about the two mysteries. They're, they want, again, you to have a concept that God is all good. And they just got Satan being his own person, not realizing that Satan is a son. He was created and he has to have permission to do anything to you. What witness do I have of that, Job? He, when, the, when it says Yahweh called the son, Satan came too, because he a son and he was right there. And that's what, Yahweh asked him, well, where are you coming from? He told him, walking to and fro. Where in the earth plane? Because uh, remember, he's been kicked out of heaven. That's why it's so hard to give a lecture and without really, you can't go through everything because there's so many integral stories that have to be broken down so that you understand what we're talking about. That's why we tell you, don't come one time. Just keep coming until of that daylight or that day star rises in your heart. And it's not gonna happen all at once. So you got both these mysteries in operation. And so you have to know where that, what happened, how it happened, how we get to this point. This is why this is a school. And we talk about the vision. Dr. Vi Dr. Kinley's vision corrects the versions that are in all these books and all these Bibles. That's pretty darn powerful. And let's go over to Luke, like I indicated, um, what is it, Luke 24, 27, something like that? Mm -hmm. Where it Luke, says beginning at Moses. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll do it, start at 25. Luke 24 and 25. Then, said, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them. In all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So he tells us where to start. Because remember, we're talking, we're reading it in the fulfillment. These people only had the law and the prophets. And when you go back and let's get that mosaic chart. When you go back to that chart, then you can tell that story there. And that story really helps us to have a better understanding of what we're trying to present to you tonight the doctrine that we're dealing with. The doctrine, and the doctrine I'm talking about is Psalms 19 to 7, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1, and 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Can we grab some of those scriptures? Because this is a school, and I don't, just like at a regular school, your teacher had to tell you stuff and tell you what page to go to so you can go home and do your homework and see if I was telling the truth or was the truth being spoken. You don't want to just come to school and say, that's right. I mean, I'm a best right sister, but I'm not that way anymore. <laughs> so as you grow, you listen, and then you get Yahweh to prove, is that right or wrong? Mm. Can we get one of them? Psalms 19 to 7, please. Psalms 19 to 7. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting. Now, let me tell you, it says the law of Yahweh is perfect. And you, you should say, well, where is the law of Yahweh at? Well, use this chart. You got Yahweh in his pure spirit state. When he steps out of that pure spirit state into shape and form as, as the title Yahweh Elohim, that's the law of Yahweh. That's perfect. You are not going to be perfect. 
no matter what you do up in the school, you're going to. And why is that? Because you are still in a physical body. And as long as you're in a physical body, things are going to happen. You're going to cry out to Yahweh because Yahshua, I'm going to cry out to Yahshua because his job is what? To save your soul, mm -hmm. to help you through this journey called life, which is him. So the law of Yahweh, and I was sitting in class one day and I'm telling, just like I'm talking to you, I looked up at that chart and Yahshua said, that's the law of Yahweh. I was like, wow, I've never seen it. So the law of Yahweh is perfect, which is Yahweh Elohim, because there are two things, immutable things that Yahweh cannot do. He don't lie and he don't change. Now yes. that's a heck of a creator to have. Some of these other gods they got out there, Beelzebub and all them other ones, they be lying to the people every day. Come and give us your money. And it's gonna, we're gonna back the Catholic Church, I'll use them. That's what I grew up with. Give us your money so if your mother or father dies, we're gonna pray and get them up out of purgatory, a place that don't even exist, something they made up. Give us your money so we can help your mother get out of hell and out uh, of purgatory and go on to the holy gates. They're making all that stuff up. They don't have that kind of power. The uh, Catholic Church said, we're gonna make Mary body, soul, and spirit in heaven. You can't put Mary up in heaven with a body. It, they just think that the satanic mystery just say anything, just be lying. He don't even care if you know the truth or not. So the law of Yahweh is perfect. What makes it so perfect and powerful? What does it do? Continue. Converting the soul. The Converting. That means to change your soul. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that you're the new soul and the old soul gets kicked out. Yahweh ain't no punk. He mm -hmm. can take that same sin, sick, dead soul that we all walked in here with. Why do I say it so clearly like that? Because that's what happened to me. I came in here with a dead soul. I didn't know I even had a soul. I felt like Priscilla and them. I don't even know if there'd be a soul because the Catholic Church didn't teach me why a soul was so important. It never, They just never taught it to me. So you came in here, dead soul, and Yahweh takes that same dead soul. He has the power to convert something dead to something alive. And that's why I said, if you've never heard the lecture, that so many people have given in this school. Look at the lecture of the caterpillar. caterpillar. I'm, I can't even talk. Look at that lecture. And you'll see how the caterpillar changes and goes through its metamorphosis and eventually comes out to be a beautiful butterfly. That's what has to happen to you. Your soul is dead. You know, and what are you dead to? You're dead to your creator. When Adam walked around, Adam spoke to Yahweh like a man speaking to a friend like Moses, face to face. And Yahweh just talked to him and told him, hey, name this an elephant, name this, this, name it that. Yahweh told El Adam what to name them things. He didn't know. So then here you have Yahweh taking that dead and Adam died, okay, in his tired mind. So when we come up in here, we are dead souls and we inherited that. We didn't do anything. That's just what we were, was given to us. It's just like with your family. You are you born into your family. You can't decide, well, I want to be born to some rich people or this kind of people. You don't have choices like that. This is what he laid out for you from the foundation of the world. So mm -hmm. it takes, he takes that dead soul and converts that soul. Okay. He converts that soul from death unto life. So now it's that he and how does he do that? Because he got power. I keep telling you, when they called him the El Sadat Almighty Provider, he truly showed Israel. He was and is an almighty provider. He did things that were just unbelievable. And that's why it's so important to get into the book and listen to some of these stories, how he just overcame and overcame and overcame. That way, as you're developing and growing in this school, in this you know, particular time period, you're going to go through some things over and over again. And you'll see the power that he has to get you out of any situation which he puts you in. Right. And we don't realize that he puts you in these situations so you can do what? Like they had to do down in Egypt. Cry out. What do I mean? When a baby gets hungry, he's put in that situation. Your baby, you can't take care of yourself. He cries out to who? The woman that gave him or the whoever gave him birth, who's ever feeding him to let them know, hey, it's time to feed me, Seymour. So he cries out. When you go through your trials and tribulation, you will be crying out to Yahweh. Yahweh, please help me. You got me here. Ask him why. I then I say I started this lecture off by saying we are always asking the questions, why? And if you ask Yahweh does not like he's gonna talk to you and tell you 
what he wants you to do to get out of a situation. So don't think, and the joy of it, it's a migratory track. You know, you go through Egypt, you go through wilderness, and your goal is to get into Canaan's land. And so that's a process. And you come down to this school to understand, well, how does a soul go through that process of going through Egypt, wilderness, and Canaan land? Well, you saw it with the Egypt, with the uh, Israelites. It was nothing special about those people. Yahweh just picked out a group of people. He made them Israelites. He gave them that. They, they were not that. Yahweh did that. Yeah, just like Yahweh changed Abraham's, Abram's name to Abraham. Your name is going to be changed because you're made up body, soul, and spirit. So when you come down here, yes, there was Rochelle. There she is. I see Rochelle all the time. But guess what? That's what my outer person is called, called. But since my inner soul is went from death unto life, I had to get a new name. I had to take on the name of Yahweh, because why not? Why the name of Yahshua? Why? Because he's the head and we make up the body. So when my when, use a Roman 19 to 20, when you wake up in the morning, your head get up and then your body better get up with you, because you ain't gonna die separately from it. So when Yahshua, when he was down there and he was preaching out to the, all of those in captive, he's the head. That's why you see them all coming out following him because they're the body. We make up the body of Yahshua, the Messiah. So it's just so beautiful to hear these stories because what they do, they reinforce and they reconnect us to the reality of what we're going through spiritually and psychologically. This is a life-changing, I see the bell, thank you, love. This is a life-changing experience and you have to go through a life-changing experience because you're dealing with your soul. And you have to do this before you take off the flesh. Don't believe when you take off the flesh, you're going to be like Jimmy. Um, one of them men that used to preach all the time, he said, I'm going to go up to heaven and play golf with God. See, that's ridiculous. These stupid statements people make. You have to know Yahweh now while you're yet in the physical body so that, he will be, so that you will understand his voice. You will know his voice. He said, my sheep, hear my voice. Because listen, people, we still got two more ages to go. That in the physical body. So you have to get all this now, get used to his, his talking to you so that you will know, you will know what your father's saying because you will know his voice. And because uh, we were told back in the day, it may come a time that we are not all meeting, but that's happening right now. I live in Lower Illinois. There is not a class around me forever. But thanks to YouTube and Zoom and also the telephone, you can go to so many classes and hear so many wonderful lectures on the doctrine that we believe in. We believe in a living Elohim who's got the power to convert your soul and to change you and make you a new creature and, and make you realize there is nothing more important to you at this point than your soul. Your soul has to be the most important thing to you right now. Not your job, not your house, not your husband, not your kids, in my case, not my cats. You know what I'm saying? You have to realize Nothing is more important than your soul being saved while you're getting the physical body so that you will be one with the father. Because wasn't Yahshua's prayer, father, make them. Who was the them? You, you, the recipients of the Holy Spirit. He said, father, make them one as you and I are one. That can be done. And I love the thing that's getting ready to happen in uh, Florida. They are talking about that kingdom. We need to be, we need to know that we've already been translated into the kingdom. What you have to be taught now and shown by Yahshua, what is the kingdom of peace, joy, and righteousness? What does that really mean to me? Am I really in the kingdom right now? And if I am, why am I still acting a fool? Why am I still doubting? Yahshua will tell you how to handle that. He'll correct you. He'll help you with that because you can walk, and I work in a, I mean, I broke down south, all these demons down here. But guess what? You can still be in a righteous peace of joy. You can be in that state of mind because that's what the kingdom is. It's nothing like what the world teaches. Remember I said Satan just lies, but Yahshua tells the truth. So with those three words, I pray that something was said that will stir up somebody's heart and mind to get into the textbook and say, let me check this out. Let me check this out and realize Yahweh is the teacher. He is the comforter. I am comforted because I needed to hear you guys tonight. I said, Yahshua, I just want to listen. And I listen and I'm still listening. So with those few words, I will turn it back to the moderator and say hallelujah. 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 Uh, okay. Thank you. That was a, a powerful testimony. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ro uh, Dr. Rochelle Morgan. 
Really, really, really appreciate that powerful lecture. And uh, that brings the conclusion to our class. I'd like to thank all of our speakers tonight. Wonderful job. Thank you, Yasha, for speaking through uh, these vessels. Once again, edifying the body, giving us uh, the increase to go on another day. That brings the conclusion to our lecture this evening. Uh, we hold classes uh, in Zoom, Monday, excuse me, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7.30 to, I'm sorry, 6.30 to 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And on Sundays uh, from 11 to 11.30 to 1.30. Um, I think that's it. Do we have any announcements, any additional announcements? Yes, the one. Okay. Hey, uh, hello everyone. Um, it was a beautiful class tonight. Um, just wanted to say we do have, as you guys know, on a consistent basis, in-person class at least once a month. It is very important that we um, get participation in particular from some of our um, young, healthy, viral, and vivacious men to help put up the charts on Sunday. We have the same group of people who do it every Sunday and we cannot have those who are doing audio and doing other tasks at class as well, trying to scramble to put up charts within a one hour period. Um, you guys will get an email within the next couple of days between now and this weekend. I'm gonna send out an email for those who will be interested in being part of the chart committee that's putting up and down charts at class. Um, right now, I believe we're dealing with maybe four or five of the main charts at this point in time. So they're all on individual stands as we used to do. And anyone that knows it, that takes probably about a good 15 minutes to put it up, especially if we get a good system. So it's very important as um, everyone has admonished Felicia, myself, Dorian, it can't just be all one person. Please, if Yahweh pricks your heart and puts it on your heart, please extend that helpful hand. We welcome it and we will appreciate it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, also, I want just to a, a reminder that next Tuesday uh, will be textbook uh, Tuesday. We will resume our textbook uh, studies once again next Tuesday. All right. We will now um, have our doxology, which is taken from the last um, books of Jude. And may we stand in our hearts and our mind uh, into a prayer for to our Savior, Yahshua Messiah. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy, to the only wise one from our Savior, the Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and for all time and ever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Great class. Great hallelujah. class.